Before I get into the review of this next film, I want to preface it with talk of this documentary I saw. Uh, it was called Electric Boogaloo, the like rise and fall of Canon Films. These are all the films that you see that say a Golden Globus production on them. This indie upstart tried to run with the big leagues in Hollywood. In some ways it tempted them. They found success in places. They found failure in others. They tried to cash in on stuff. Well, one of the movies brought up in this documentary was Runaway Train, which is streaming on Netflix, and I watched a few days ago. Now, Runaway Train, I just as they said in the documentary here, this started out with Orion Pictures, which, mind you, has resurfaced. Like, last November, you know, really a few months back, Orion Pictures came back on the scene, and they're still using that old, I think from 1970s, like 1979, uh, logo at the beginning of their movies. Love that. I'd rather see the old 79 Fox logo than the new crap. Back on topic. Runway Train. It was nominated for Oscars. Roger Ebert said it was thrilling. Didn't make any money. It's like 9 million budget. 8 million at the box office. Let's talk about the actual movie. John Voight and Eric Roberts are convicts. This is 1985. They're in Alaska. It's cold outside. They escape from a prison and board a train. At the same moment this train's starting up, the engineer has a heart attack, falls off the side of the train. It's running rampant. They don't much know this, really. Ends up hitting a caboose. Uh, you know, there's wreckage. Then they try to make their way forward. They find out, and this is only a train with like four cars, just four engines. They find Rebecca De Mornay, who is unsexed in this movie. It doesn't seem like she has any right being in this, but I do like how she looks like an every girl. She looks very normal. There's, she's bundled up because it's cold outside. It's not like need plunging neckline or anything like that. You know, the people who had to work with her, good on them for trying to keep it legit. She's telling them a little bit about how the train works, how you need to get to the front push button. Meanwhile, the warden, whoever the hell's running that prison, he was a real dick to John Voight. And he's like got a personal vendetta against him. There's a lot of wind out here. Don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to assume you can. It's about three feet from the mic. Maybe two. So, he actually gets on the train via helicopter. You know, they had these people at the depot, whatever, the switchboard, trying to shut all the stuff down. There's these barricades they're breaking through. He wants to bring these guys in because it makes this guy a folk hero if he, if he gets away and if he kills them or if they get killed, whatever. He, he thinks there's going to be a riot at his prison. But he, he actually, there was a guy who tried to get on the train first. He crashed, broke through this window that John Voight's able to climb through to get to the front train, fights the, the warden, locks him up, and then uncouples the cars in the back so that Eric Roberts and Rebecca DeMornay live. Then he just says, you're dying with me, pal. Because they're about to run out of track. He just climbs up on top of the train and just surfs it. He got his fingers smashed. And the coupler, you know, he's looking pretty grisly. And they actually show the coupler bit on TV. I could have sworn this was more gruesome before. I mean, now it, it seems like his hands get pinched a little bit. Like over here. I thought before they actually had a, a puppet hand getting smashed off so hey you know you just kind of kind of freaked me out to be honest with you stuff about fingers getting cut off kind of bugs me so that's your movie really I mean it's pretty straightforward but it's got some really good music in it brings an unusual amount of drama 
And with the title Runaway Train, you're expecting TV movie. And I know there's been TV movies about this. You know, very similar premise. It's actually pretty damn exciting. Seldom are there any shots that look phony. There are some close-ups of the guys trying to descend with a helicopter and you can see that they're composited in. You know, they got the thick black outline of the day on those green screen bits. But, you know, most of it, it's like, I'm glad people were climbing on something. There's an actual helicopter in a movie, oh my God. You don't see helicopters in movies anymore. <laughs> Bring back the helicopters. You know, look how quick the editing has to be for, I can't even remember the goddamn title, but you know that last Tony Scott movie with Denzel and Chris Pine. They, they had a train, right? Almost nothing happened that whole movie. It's not near as exciting as this. They had to jerk the camera around, have real break in the editing, try to make it interesting. This stays pretty compelling through and through. Also, I want to say that performances were very believable. You know, this is a, a realism piece here. They're not going around cracking jokes and pop culture references. Just a, a nice movie. Well, at the very beginning, check out the guy that Eric Roberts is boxing. That's Danny Trejo. And I thought I recognized him, and I was right. Tiny Liston Jr. He's, he's there in the beginning too. I give Runaway Train three out of four stars.